All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Um, <clears throat> I want to paint my barn here. I actually started a couple weeks ago, and I got one section done with a brush and a roller, but um, my barn is T111 siding, so it's super rough. Uh, brush and roller was taking forever, so um, didn't really want to spend the money on a sprayer, I didn't think, but then I got to looking at them. They're really not priced as bad as I would have thought. So this is an electronic or electric sprayer just a corded sprayer. It's not a pneumatic, so you don't need an air compressor to run it. Um, supposed to be good for latex paints. I guess it's actually better for latex paints than your typical air sprayer. Um, I don't know why that is. I think it just sprays at a higher pressure. But uh, anyhow, let's unbox it here. This is a Wagner Flexio. I think it was around 125 bucks at uh, Low Home Depot. There's the actual motor. Some sort of filter. Paint reservoir, spray nozzle, which you can turn that vertical or horizontal, and I'm sure adjust your stream like so. Yeah, so you can see wider stream, more narrow. So we'll play with that, and then it says it has numbers on it from 1 through 12. We'll see what that's all about. Yeah, so that's just like a quarter turn valve almost, but it's a just a quarter turn thread, and then that locks right into place. Like that. Yeah, so that dial really just adjusts how far back you can pull the trigger. So I'm sure that's you know how much paint you're actually applying. Nobody reads directions anymore, right? At least guys don't. So for latex paints and primers, it's saying you want the air power on high, material flow, which is your dial. You want it on nine to eleven. I guess that means we'll put it on time then, right? So you can see like in these seams, I guess it's supposed to be, look like battens, like on board and batten. But also here in these cracks, it's very, very hard to get paint to fill those areas with a brush or a roller. So I'm hoping this does uh, a better job of that.
Well, I can tell you right now. So, I mean, after a while, it's going to get heavy in your hand, but I can tell you right now, this is a million times easier than what I was doing with the roller and the brush. I'm out of paint again, but I'm gonna call that side pretty much done. Got my conduit painted up there, which is sticking out kind of like a sore thumb and now you can't even see it. Now like stuff like this, I'll have to hit with the roller and the brush because I just don't want to get overspray on uh, all my um, flashing and the trim around the uh, doors. But what just took me about 15 minutes there Took me over an hour here with the brush and the roller and actually I'll probably go back through and hit this with the uh, sprayer just because the brush and the roller had a hard time getting in some of these rougher areas. I really wanted to get one coat on everything before winter and I should have no problem doing that now. Um, matter of fact I should have most of it done tonight. I can hit most of this up front on the peak and over here with the sprayer without worrying about getting paint all over everything. This section will be super easy. And then obviously gotta go around the windows and then in the back of the barn there, but.
that's pretty impressive. I pretty much painted that whole side in less than 15 minutes. That's a whole lot more fun and easier than doing it with a brush and a roller. So um, I'm gonna finish up, but overall my first uh, impressions of this thing are pretty good. It's already, uh, I actually would have put you guys, mounted you to my head here and shown you kind of an up close, but it does get uh, overspray and stuff on you. I've got overspray on my clothes a little bit and you can see where uh, it's gotten on the actual gun. So I didn't want to get it all over my camera, but uh, it really does do a nice job of getting in all the um, cracks and crevices. And I think once it dries, it's gonna look really nice. I mean, it looks really nice right now, but I think it'll dry and be a lot more even of a color. So this one's already started to dry a little bit, it's starting to change colors. But good purchase. Jeez, I think I'd pay that 125 bucks even if I could only use it once and the thing was disposable because it's going to save me on this whole garage probably like eight hours worth of work and a lot of uh, aggravation. So time is money, but. I'm going to clean it up when we're done and uh, we'll be able to use it uh, next time we paint the barn. Well, as you can see, uh, looks pretty good. Um, it all dried the same color. Went super quick. Um, I don't know if I could recommend it for indoor. You do get a fair amount of overspray. Um, I didn't have any trouble with stuff out here, but I feel like if you're doing walls and you had a white ceiling um, in an enclosed space like inside a house uh, that you're probably going to end up with more overspray than you want. Um, obviously stuff like this, smaller areas I got to finish off by hand and then I got to cut in around all my windows and my trim with a brush or a roller um, or a combination of each. And then I got white uh paint for the trim and i don't know turned out pretty good like i said this was all brush and roller and then i did stuff like uh well, basically the whole rest of the barn with the sprayer and it just flew compared to this so um if you're doing like a rough surface like a barn a shed especially this t111 stuff or like rough cut if you're painting that I'd absolutely recommend the um, sprayer, the airless sprayer, but uh, inside I'd probably still go with a brush and roller and maybe there's tricks that I don't know, but um, that's my first impressions of it. But uh, very easy to clean up. All I did was uh, fill the reservoir with soapy water and um, I just kind of shook it up as I sprayed it through there and that's what the directions said to do it, it broke up all that paint latex and if you uh, use like an oil-based paint you're going to want to use a solvent based um like a mineral spirit to clean that sprayer out and then they give you some stuff for the o-rings in there that basically keep those o-rings from drying out um it's just like a lube like a probably like almost like a vaseline petroleum jelly style lubricant and uh you'd put that on the o-rings when you're done and uh it'd be ready to go for the next time, but obviously using latex and just soapy water, you don't need to um, do that step. So anyway, thanks for watching guys, and uh, Vigo and I will catch you on the next one.